Good evening, everyone. Welcome to evening prayer. This is our opportunity to pause, um, to make ourselves aware of God's presence with us and to offer God everything that is running around our minds and our thoughts and to center ourselves again in who God is and to be grounded in who God says we are. It's a space to breathe. So at the beginning of this time, let's be deliberate. Let's pause and take a breath. We light this candle as a sign that Christ is with us. Prince of Peace, come into our turmoil. Jesus, who reached out to those whom society had forgotten, may we follow you. Amen. If you've not grabbed a copy of the Psalms yet, now is the time to do that. Open up... um, the Psalm 32, and this is a, a song, uh, song lyrics by King David, and this song is about forgiveness. Uh, this song is about the experience of forgiveness. Um, it compares life before and life after, and uses various poetic language to describe that. <clears throat> Uh, for example, it says, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy on me, your strength. My strength was sapped as in the heat of summer. Talks about David feeling uh, God's hand on him, conviction that he's done wrong. Um, and then... <clears throat> The change is rejoice in the Lord, (laughs) be glad, ye righteous, sing, all ye who are upright in heart. And I hope if you are watching this tonight, then you know that difference, you've experienced that difference, you know what it's like to have conviction uh, when you're honest about the things that you've got wrong and the hurt that you've caused. And it's a joy to have uh, freedom, (laughs) to have a slate wiped clean, to be able to begin anew with God. But there's a crucial element in that story of conviction and forgiveness. And the crucial element is repentance. Repentance. Being honest with yourself, with God, with others even sometimes about what you've got wrong. That's when the healing comes, that's when the freedom comes. Verse 3 of Psalm 32, David says, When I kept silent, my bones wasted away. And so if we're not speaking out about our sin, if we're not being honest with ourselves about our sin, then like, God can't set us free. God can't take away the weight of, of what we're suffering. Those words are particularly pointing it today um it brings to mind something a friend of mine uh jasper a methodist minister in denver wrote to his congregation on sunday he writes our country is in turmoil because it has never dealt with the sin of racism created by greed established in blood and maintained in large part by the apathy of privileged white people Though previous generations have played their part, not one has been able to invite this nation 
to fully face the racism that pervades 400 years of American history. Whenever we read David saying that God's hand was heavy on him, that, um, that his bones were wasting away, he was groaning day and night, his strength was sapped. Thinking of everything being suffered right now in the USA. And what gives me hope for change, what gives me hope for, for real lasting change there um, is whenever we see um, police, whenever we see public leaders, whenever we see lawmakers speaking out and saying, yes, our country has a problem with systemic racism. It is built into our systems and it's something we need to change. To me, that sounds like repentance. That sounds like admission of sin and willingness to change and be changed. So as we read this psalm tonight, let's be praying for our brothers and sisters in the USA. Let's be praying for that country um, to experience a repentance from the sin of racism. But of course, as we're praying for someone else, as well as we're looking at the speck in their eye, let's be really aware of the plank in our own. Uh, we can be praying for our own country. We can be praying for our own culture. We can be praying most of all for our own hearts. Uh, the need to be repentant, not just of uh, kind of racism and, and other kinds of prejudice, um, but just to be really honest with God and ourselves. Uh, about some of the stuff that we harbour, some of the stuff that we carry, and some of the hurt that comes from our behaviour. So let's read together Psalm 32, and let's make it our prayer. Blessed is the one whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the one whose sin the Lord does not count against them, in whose spirit is no deceit. When I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night, your hand was heavy on me. My strength was sapped as in the heat of summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not cover up my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord. And you forgave the guilt of my sin. Therefore, let all the faithful pray to you while you may be found. Surely the rising of the mighty waters will not reach them. You are my hiding place. You will protect me from trouble and surround me with songs of deliverance. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my loving eye on you. Don't be like the horse or the mule which have no understanding, must, but must be controlled by a bit and bridle. Or they will not come to you. Many are the woes of the wicked, but the Lord's unfailing love surrounds the one who trusts in him. Rejoice in the Lord and be glad, you righteous. Sing all ye who are upright in heart. So thankful to God for this word at this time. We just want to use it to jump off in the prayer now. So I'm just going to pray what's on my heart. That'll be different for what's going on for you, but just do the same. Just pray, just pour out your heart to God. And Lord, we just thank you for these words. We thank you for this um, confession and, and David's meditation on, on what it's like to go through that journey from conviction through confession and repentance to just complete freedom and joy, that weight lifted off, that slate wiped clean. 
But God, as we come to you, we are heavy. We're heavy in heart. We're heavy in heart because we see um, the sins of a nation. And Lord, we see the sin of our own hearts. God, like David, we're saying to you now, we won't try and cover it up anymore. And so in a moment of quietness, uh, let's you and me both be honest with God about our own hearts and uh, our own sin. Lord, we need you. We need you. We need your forgiveness. We've sinned against you and against our neighbours in thought and word and deed. In the evil we have done and in the good we have not done. Through ignorance through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. God, we're truly sorry. And we repent of all our sin. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past. Grant that we may serve you in newness of life. To the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. I encourage you just to keep this conversation with God going, whether you've got more time to spend in quietness or whether you're off to do the dishes or something else. Keep speaking with God. Keep giving thanks for that experience of forgiveness. Keep praying for our brothers and sisters in America. Um, but now I'm going to leave you. So grace and peace be with you.